Hi, my friend. I want to welcome you into my home. And I want to wish you from my family to your family the very merriest of Christmas. I live north of Houston, Texas. I live in Conroe. And it's about, oh, I would say uh, 40 miles north of Houston. It's 70 degrees today here in Conroe. You know, I come from up north. I prefer colder weather at Christmas time, although they say it's going to get colder soon. I want to introduce you to my Christmas tree. It's not the prettiest tree in the world. I went to a shop at Walmart, and we found it in the corner all by itself, kind of neglected. My granddaughter felt sorry for the tree. We call the tree stubby. Now, not only is the tree very, very small, which you probably can't see from this TV broadcast, but uh, it's also leaning, and it's leaning a lot. Now, I positioned the camera where you can't see it as much. We call it the Leaning Tower of Treza. Uh, it could be the way that I put it into the stand. I don't know, but I was alone when I did it, and you know, once you get it into the stand and screwed down, I wasn't going to move it at that point. We have a star on top, and that star is uh, attached to wires that hold the tree up, keep it from falling over in its leaning position. Well, this holiday season, I want to share a classic with you that we have shared before. Uh, but I think that this sums up Christmas. This was originally a story prepared by UPI News, by Louis Castles, the Christmas story of God born in a man. It escapes many moderns because they try to find complex answers to their complex questions. But this is utterly simple. So, to the skeptics, we offer a modern parable. There was once a kind and a decent, mostly good man. The man that I'm talking about was not Scrooge. He was generous to his family, upright in his dealings with other people, but he just did not believe in all that incarnation stuff the churches always proclaim at Christmas time. And he couldn't pretend otherwise. He just couldn't swallow the Jesus story about God coming to earth as a man that a man could have God in him. One year he said to his wife, I'm truly sorry to distress you, but I'm not going to church with you on this Christmas Eve. So he stayed home while his family went to the evening service. As they drove away in their car, the snow began to fall. The flurries got heavier and heavier. And he went to the window to watch them as they drove away and to watch the snow as it collected on the ground. He finally went back to his fireside chair and began to read the newspaper. Minutes later, he was startled by a loud thudding sound, and then another, and then another. And he thought to himself, well, someone must be throwing snowballs against my living room window. When he investigated, he found a flock of birds huddled miserably in the snow. They had been caught in the storm, and in their desperate search for shelter, they had tried to fly through his large picture window. Well, he just couldn't let the poor creatures lie there and freeze, so he went outside and found them flopping around in the snow. He remembered a certain area in the barn that would be a help to them, an area that would help them to live through this Christmas Eve night. The area in the barn was where the children kept their pony, and it would provide warm shelter, if only he could attract the birds to it. Well, quickly he put on his coat and his galoshes, and he trampled through the evening snow to the barn. He opened the doors wide, turned on the lights inside, but the birds 
wouldn't fly into the barn. The man thought food might entice them. So he hurried back to the house to get something for the birds to eat. But the birds didn't pay any attention to the breadcrumbs any more than they paid attention to the well-lit, warm, wide opening of the barn. To them, this must have been a frightening sight. And to his dismay, the birds ignored the breadcrumbs and continued to flop helplessly in the snow. Well, he tried to catch them. He tried to shoo them into the barn by walking around them, waving his arms. But instead, they scattered in every direction except the warm, lighted barn. He realized, they're afraid of me. And as he thought, he reasoned to them, I must be a strange, a terrifying creature. If only there was some way that I could let them know that they could trust me, that I'm not trying to harm them, only trying to help them. But how could I convince these birds? Everything I do frightens and confuses them. They wouldn't follow. They wouldn't be led. They wouldn't be shooed or chased into the barn because they feared him. As he stood there in the snow, as it was falling around him, the thought came to him, if only I could be a bird, then I could go with them, speak their language, and tell them, do not be afraid. I could show them the way to the warm and the safe barn, but I'd have to be a bird, I'd have to be one of them, so that they could understand. At that moment, church bells began to ring in the distance. The sound reached his ears above the sound of the wind, and he stood there listening to the church bells, actually feeling the glad tidings of Christmas. He sank to his knees in the snow as the birds flew into the barn. For the first time, this man understood Jesus was born into a world that trembled with fear of a distant God, a society of people who would not even speak God's name out of fear of death. Jesus was born to bring this message. There is a light and a warmth waiting for you in God. The way is wide open for you to enter therein, to full abundant life. This is all because 2,000 years ago a soul prepared for eons of time and became incarnate in the body of that babe. On our Christmas tree we do not have matching ornaments. Each ornament that we have on our tree is something that has happened in our life together as a family. We have pictures of cruise ships with different cruises we've taken, cars of different cars that we've owned and traveled together in. We have ornaments that are from special places that we have been. Memories are what makes up Stubby, the Leaning Tower of Teresa. And memories are what make up our lives. When we have memories that are spiritual together, life becomes greater. It has a depth to it. It has special meaning. It is not just the effects of life, the outer objects that bring you joy. That joy comes from you. Center to circumference. It lives in you. It grows in you. Luke 2, 1 through 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census 
that took place while Quinarius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. Here he went to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, and wrapped him in claws and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were afraid. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, because I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they were told. My friend, I pray with you and your family this holiday season. I pray this Christmas is a special time for you. No matter where you are, no matter what kind of tree you have. I pray that this is a special, a spiritual time where you feel and you are aware of the birth of Christ, where you are aware of the rebirth of Christ in you, where you're aware of the specialness of the season and the specialness of every day. I pray that your life is filled with joy. I pray that it is filled with love. And I pray for special blessings as never before to be upon you and yours because of your awareness spiritually of the real meaning of Christmas. God bless you. And again, Merry Christmas. <music>